This video is going to show you three tips that I think will improve every aspect of your gameplay in Super Smash Bros. Melee, so let's get started. If you want to get better at Melee, you need to do the following. Number one, know the options. Number two, act with purpose. And number three, watch your opponent and react accordingly. So what does all of that actually mean? Let's start with the first tip, knowing the available options. What a lot of players don't realize is that the majority of situations in Melee can be summed up as a sequence with problems and answers. Some situations are a lot like rock, paper, scissors. Shield beats attacks, but loses to grab, which loses to attacks, etc. Others are more complex, but the basic idea is that every character has a number of different options available to them, and each one of these options has advantages and disadvantages. My video on Sheik's forward tilt is a great example of this. Sheik's F tilt beats many things, but loses to many things as well. If someone wanted to get better at dealing with Sheik's F tilt, the first thing they'd want to learn is what options they have that can actually beat it. The problem is, is that most melee players don't do this and don't recognize how important it is if they want to improve. They're like a carpenter who owns an entire tool set and only knows how to use their hammer. If you're trying to get better at melee, you need to fix this. So how do you fix this? Well, there are two methods I'd recommend. The first is to watch pro players, see what options they choose to cover certain things, and learn them yourself. And the second, or my preferred method, is to ask players that are better than you. Want to know how to beat Falco side B as Falco? Watch professional Falco vs Falco matches and I guarantee you'll see at least one way to do so. But simply asking someone can also get you there quicker. For the record, laser, down smash, down air, down angled F tilt, and jab are all acceptable in different situations. Anyway, if you set out to learn at least one new answer to a specific problem in Melee every time you play the game, you'll be amazed at how quickly you improve. Make a mental note to keep track of situations in game that you're struggling to handle and focus specifically on learning the answers to that situation. Then practice those answers so you're able to execute them properly when it counts. Both of these pieces are critical. If you don't know the option, you won't know how to use it. And if you don't practice the option, you won't be able to use it anyway. There's a second side to this know the options coin, and that's knowing your opponent's options. Let's go back to that side B example. We're trying to cover Falco's side B on the edge as Falco. So how do we do that? We already know how important it is to know our options, but Melee is a two-player game, so we need to know our opponent's options as well if we're going to make the most optimal play. In this specific case, we need to ask ourselves, does Falco have his double jump? Can Falco land on stage with his side B? Can he land on a platform? Can he up B instead? If he can't, you're in a great spot. But if he can, then you have to account for those options and choose accordingly. As you can see, learning that you can down smash his side B isn't enough. You have to learn what your opponent can do to play around that. By knowing our opponent's options, it acts as a filter to help us choose the option that serves us best. Unfortunately, many players aren't aware of what their options can do in specific situations, and they simply cannot make good choices consistently because of this. For example, if Falco is so far away from the stage that his only option is to side B back, and you have time to make it to the ledge, you should be grabbing the ledge 100% of the time. Sure, a well-timed down smash could work, but why open the possibility of timing it wrong? What if he shortens? By recognizing what your opponent can and cannot do, you're able to narrow down what you should do as well. And these tiny optimizations start to add up really quickly. In this case, one leads to a lost stock and the other does not. Unfortunately, things aren't always this clear cut. Like I said before, if Falco has his double jump and is above the stage, it just isn't possible to cover 100% of his options. And this is true for every top tier character. Great recoveries have a variety of ways to mix you up so you can't cover them all. Because of this, you're going to have to commit to covering something if you want to succeed. Most situations in Melee are like this. Ideal play comes from choosing an option that covers a few things well and not taking unnecessary risks. This doesn't mean risks are bad, it just means that risks are only worth taking if they actually make sense. Weigh the pros and cons and look to see if there's a better option available. As a general rule, it's better to do something risky that covers a specific option than something safe that actually covers nothing or covers many things very poorly. Also, if you're in a situation where you can react, reacting is almost always better, but keep in mind that not all situations are reactable, so it's better to ask better players if you're unsure, or just tag Drugbox on Twitter. Kidding. Sort of. Like I demonstrated in my Sheik video, in Melee, it's unlikely there's one perfect option for a specific situation. While there are a few exceptions, usually you have to give up something to cover something else. In a similar way, powerful options in Melee can often be beaten in a variety of ways. The only exceptions are when something is entirely reactable, when your opponent is in such a bad spot that they've run out of alternative options, like the side B example, 
or when your character has the privilege of being able to cover every option with only one of their own. All of this might seem obvious, but it's crazy how many players go for things that they think seem good, but at best don't achieve anything, and at worst put them in a bad spot for no reason at all. Optimal play usually comes from balancing the best of both worlds, and I can pretty much guarantee that there is at least one aspect of your play in every matchup that you could work on. Another thing to note is that in some cases, simply switching up the timing of an option is basically another option in itself. Falco's up tilt is great against Falcon, but not if they know when it's coming. By throwing it out at different timings, you can make it way harder to deal with and are presenting them different situations they have to play around in neutral, even though you're using the exact same move. Okay, so we get why knowing the options of both yourself and your opponents is super useful, and that leads us into our second point, acting with purpose. So what is acting with purpose? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. Do stuff in melee that actually benefits you in some way. Move with purpose. Attack with purpose. Defend with purpose. When you look at the highest level of competitive melee, the best plays all have one thing in common. They set out to achieve a specific goal. Every action chosen has a specific purpose. These actions weigh the pros and cons and set out to hopefully give the player an edge in some way. Whether it's setting up a kill, countering a move in neutral, or extending a combo, optimal decision making comes from always choosing options that benefit you as a player. The best example of this quality in a player, in my opinion, is Armada. When you watch Armada play Peach, every option he chooses is clearly intentional and serves a very specific purpose. Even if it doesn't end up working out, the options he chooses were chosen for a reason. The reverse, unfortunately, is also true. The worst plays in melee don't have a purpose, or if they do, they don't weigh the risk versus rewards effectively and potentially miss out on using an option that's just as powerful but significantly less risky, or just as risky but way more powerful. For example, maybe a player throws out a move that won't actually kill the opponent even if it connects, when they could go for another option that's just as punishable or even significantly harder to punish but actually leads to a kill. Everything about that decision is bad, it's risky, efficient and requires you to win neutral several more times just to get the same lead you would have gotten had you chosen a better option. So if you're going for an option, ask yourself, why am I doing this? And if you can't figure out an answer, that's a really clear sign that you're doing something wrong. Acting with purpose doesn't mean you're suddenly able to beat out every move. It just means whatever decision you make should actually do something. This seems really obvious, but I'm confident that most players watching this act without purpose multiple times per game, and even pros do it all the time. Okay, and I know some of you might be thinking, Melee is supposed to be creative, you're taking all the creativity out of Melee. And that's understandable, but misguided. Creativity doesn't happen by accident. When a jazz musician improvises, they don't just play notes entirely randomly, and neither do pro Melee players. When they break the rules, they break them on purpose, and Melee is the same. When a pro player does something weird, they're doing it for a reason. Sometimes a seemingly incorrect move is good because it baited the opponent into doing something else that was unsafe. Pro players aren't perfect, but they often act with purpose the majority of the time. So the point is that you shouldn't be randomly throwing out moves during the neutral game or punish game if they don't actually do something to serve your game plan. Moves aren't good because they're good. They're good because they have a purpose. If you learn the purpose, then you just need to apply it and avoid becoming too predictable. Which leads us to our final tip. Watch your opponent and react accordingly. It's pretty hard to act with purpose if you're not paying attention to your opponent. Let's look at a simple example. Shielding in this position has a purpose. It protects against a variety of attacks and can even lead to punishes out of shield. This doesn't mean the opponent can't beat the option by grabbing. It just means that shielding is an option that counters specific plays from the opponent. They're shielding for a reason. In contrast, shielding here serves no purpose. The player is already outside of their opponent's range, so all they are doing is limiting their movement options and handicapping themselves for no reason. Same action, but one has a purpose and one does not. The only difference is where the opponent was at the time. This is what I mean by always watching your opponent and letting it inform your decision making. Because even the most optimal moves are only optimal in specific situations, and the majority of those situations come down to positioning. If you've ever watched a pro player analyze matches from their fans or subscribers, one of the most common problems that they pick up is that players just throw out stuff for no reason. They likely don't know the best options, they don't act with purpose, and they don't watch their opponent to choose options that fit the situation. A lot of this can be fixed or prevented by looking at what your opponent's doing and choosing options that make sense in relation to that. Remember that example where we talked about Falco recovering? That's exactly what I'm talking about. If 
you see that Falco only has one option to survive, it's way easier to cover it and narrows down your options down to the stuff that beats that option. While this is an extreme example, this general concept applies to all of Melee. I can't count the number of times I've played people online who literally do stuff to me that visibly loses to the option I'm showing them at the time. Like if you dash attack someone who's visibly crouching, that dash attack isn't going to work. It serves no purpose. That doesn't mean that dash attacks in general serve no purpose. It just means you need to act in relation to what your opponents are doing. All of these concepts will come with practice, but only if you're mindful of it. You're not going to learn the spacing of Sheik's dash attack overnight, but you also won't learn it if you never try to figure out what it is in the first place. Taking a couple moments every game to ask yourself whether the option you're doing actually makes sense can go a long way. So there you have it. If you can master these three tips, you'll improve a ton and really quickly. That being said, improvement still isn't going to happen overnight. Another huge part of improving is committing to the idea that all of this is a process. You're going to make all of these mistakes as you get better, and even pro players forget to do this kind of stuff all the time. There's no magic way to learn everything in a single night, and there's no perfect melee. Yet. Instead, I recommend learning specific options and spamming the hell out of them in friendlies to learn where they work and where they don't. It's a great way to learn by doing, which is way more fun than studying the pros all the time. As long as you're mindful of it while you play, or even watching Melee, you can look for situations where you don't have answers and look into finding them to get better. Because improving in Melee shouldn't be some kind of course you have to study for like school, but it also shouldn't be a journey where you have to discover everything on your own just by playing. So follow these tips and you'll have a pretty good idea of where to start working on weak aspects of your gameplay. And thankfully, you're watching a YouTube channel right now that can give you tools and ideas for what you need to improve on. So subscribe if you're interested. And that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Macro Melee. It's been a while. If you haven't heard, I had to take a pretty big break from making videos due to getting a concussion from a car accident. At the moment, amazingly, I'm still recovering, but hopefully I'll be able to make more videos as I start to get better. If you want to learn more, I did a live stream video explaining things, so check that out if you're interested. Also, if you're interested in supporting me, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications of when I make my next video. And you can also support me on Patreon. I'm seriously considering pursuing YouTube full time, but I can only do that if I can afford to pay my living expenses, so supporting me on Patreon really goes a long way. With that in mind, I want to give a shout out to all the patrons that stuck with me over the last year and a half, and to Evan Oliver for helping me record clips as usual. Expect more videos coming soon, and I'll see you guys next time. Oh, and if you're interested in seeing me play Magi and KJH, check out the episode of the reads that I've linked in the video description. My netplay tag is Cerulean, and all I can say is it had some funny moments. Alright, see you guys.